Okay, in this video on conditional probability, we are going to now introduce Bayes' theorem, uh, and we're going to develop the formula in this video. Now, if you take a look at this, this is a very intimidating formula. In fact, uh, let's see, this involves n, yeah, n uh, sets. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a simplified version of it. We're going to have three sets, a1, a2, and a3. Again, notice that this goes up to a n. Uh, I just want to do the three sets. Okay, so this is how I'm going to develop Bayes' theorem. First, going to have a big universal set. Now, one of the conditions for Bayes' theorem requires that you have sets that partition your universal set. And I have a1, a2, and a3 that partition my universal set right here, which I can call U. All right, now partition the set means not only are they mutually exclusive, they have to cover the entire universal set. And then we're going to have the set E. All right, so let's, let's create E. Now E is a set that can overlap some. It, it doesn't actually have to go over all of them, but I think it's easier if I just have, them, have it lay over all three sets. Oops. Let's bring that back. Okay, so this will be E. All right, now I just want to label some stuff here just so we are familiar with it. This region right here, that is A1 and E. All right, this region right here, that is A2 and E. And then this region a3 and E. All right, so let me shade an E. Now, when you're doing a word problem, you're typically given the following information. All right, if it's a basic, you know, like a fundamental base theorem problem, you're going to be given, or at least you can figure this out easily, the probability of A1, the probability of A2, and the probability of A3. All right, whether you're given all three of them or you're given one and you have to figure out the other ones, but you're typically given these. And then you're also given the probability of E given A1, the probability of E given A2, and then the probability of E given A3. So these are typically given to you. All right, then. Now, what Bayes' theorem does is... Okay, sorry for the phone call. I am back. Now, Bayes' theorem asks the following question. Or, Bayes' theorem, I shouldn't ask, say that. Bayes' theorem will answer the following question. What is the probability of A, say, A1, given E? Now, this is normally not given to us, and Bayes' theorem finds it. Notice, come back up here. Bayes' theorem finds the probability of A, I, given E. So in this case, like our example, A1, given E. All right, so how's that going to do that? Well, let's, let's see how this formula works. Let's start by writing down what it is we're trying to find. And what we're trying to find, probability of A1, so that's our example, given E. Now, if we use the conditional probability formula, what this is, is it's the probability of A1 and E divided by the probability of E. Okay, well, if you come down here, what's the probability of E? Well, E is made up of three sections. Okay, this section right here, the one in here, and the one in here. All right, so E is made up of A1 and E plus, I shouldn't really say plus, union, but I'll just say plus for now, A2 and E plus A3 and E. Oops. All right, so the probability of E is going to be the probability of A1 and E plus the probability of A2 and E plus the probability of A3 and E. 
All right, then. Now notice that these do not intersect at all, which is why we're not subtracting off any intersection stuff. All right, so let's let's rewrite the formula up here as the probability of A1 and E divided by and those three sets from, or the probability of E, which is made up of those three down at the bottom. So that was A1 and E plus the probability of A2 and E probability of A3 and E. All right then. Well, these may or may not be that easy to find, but you know what? We do have a, a conditional probability formula that's going to be very useful. Because you got to remember that we're actually given some information. I said that and you're probably going to be given the probability of E given A1. And you're probably also given the probability of A1, because otherwise, without this information, you're not going to be able to do Bayes' theorem. Well, you know what? What is the probability of E given A1? Well, that's the probability of A1 and E divided by the probability of A1. So that's just our normal conditional probability formula. But you know what happens if you solve for the probability of A1 and E? Well, let's do that. That'll be the probability of A1 and E equals the probability of E given A1 times the probability of A1. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this right here, because notice it that's right there, the probability of A1 and E, and we're going to substitute in, instead of the intersection, we're going to substitute in this. Okay. Now if this is the probability of A1 and E, then this is going to be the probability of A2 and E, which is the probability of E given A2 times the probability of A2. And then we'll have the probability of A3 and E, which equals the probability of E given A3 times the probability of A3. So we have all of these intersections up here. And now I'm going to replace all of those intersections with these. So let's go ahead and do that. The probability of E1, or I'm sorry, E given A1 times the probability of A1 over, and then the probability of A1, sorry, E given A1 times the probability of A1 plus probability of E given A2 times the probability of A2 plus, and then the probability of E given A3 times the probability of A3. Now this is Bayes' theorem using three sets. Now if you had n sets, then just the denominator would have to go all the way out to n. So hopefully this video helps you understand where Bayes' theorem comes from and it has a, it helps you with the word problems and maybe gives you a little bit more of appreciation of Bayes' theorem and how important it is to probability. All right, see you in the next video.